Welcome. Today's topic is screening and selection of transformed E. coli, which will be transformed by recombinant PBR322. Now this, as you can see, is the diagrammatic representation of PBR322. Now PBR322 is a plasmid. Now what is a plasmid? A plasmid is a circular DNA molecule which is present extra-chromosomally in bacteria as well as certain yeasts. PBR322 is a plasmid whose host is E. coli. P stands for plasmid, B and R stands for Believer and Rodriguez. These are the two scientists who have artificially synthesized PBR322. Now it has various restriction digestion sites and two selectable markers an ampicillin resistance gene and a tetracycline resistance gene. Now as we can see this is PBR322. Here it was tetracycline resistance gene. If this part of the PBR322 is digested by BAMH1 which is a restriction endonuclease then it will essentially look like this. When this is added with a gene X which is actually our gene of interest and an enzyme DNA ligase then they will join to form a recombinant PBR322. This recombinant PPR322 when allowed to enter an E. coli cell then such an E. coli is known as transformed E. coli. Now there can be three cases. First is when we are injecting the recombinant PPR322 then none of the E. coli actually take up the recombinant plasmid. Such E. coli are known as non-transformed E. coli. The second is the E. coli have been transformed but with normal PBR322. And the third case is the E. coli have been transformed with the desired recombinant PBR322. Now if we take case 1 that is of non-transformed E. coli and we try to grow it in ampicillin containing medium then because it is lacking PBR322 it will be unable to grow in ampicillin containing medium and same is the case when it is grown in tetracycline containing medium. The case 2 it consists of normal PBR322 both ampicillin and tetracycline resistance gene are intact so these cells are able to grow in both ampicillin as well as tetracycline containing media. Then is the third case which is our desired case, the transformed E. coli with recombinant PBR322. Now this recombinant PBR322 has intact ampicillin resistance gene but the tetracycline resistance gene is not now intact. So such transformed E. coli are able to grow in ampicillin containing medium but not in tetracycline containing medium. Now we have this petri plate and a normal growth media. These are E. coli colonies which are growing over here. Here all non-transformed E. coli and transformed E. coli are able to grow because this neither consists of ampicillin nor tetracycline. When we transfer the E. coli colonies present in this petri plate to another petri plate which contains ampicillin, then non-transformed E. coli are unable to grow because they do not have PBR322. Transformed E. coli with normal plasmid that is PBR322 is able to grow because it has intact ampicillin resistance gene. But transformed E. coli with recombinant PBR322 are also able to grow right because ampicillin resistance gene is intact and tetracycline is not 
when the colonies from ampicillin containing media is transferred to tetracycline containing medium actually not transferred but copied via a wooden block technique then non transformed e coli are obviously not growing over there transformed e coli with normal plasmid are able to grow why because uh, they have intact tetracycline resistance gene but transformed e coli with recombinant pbr322 are unable to grow reason the tetracycline gene now consists of a foreign gene or foreign dna now if we want to trace where these colonies are present then the points at which the colonies are not grown can be traced back in the second plate and we can take out the colony of transformed e coli that contain a recombinant ppr322 that's all for the day thank you